Yakuza has had quite a huge lineup of characters over the years. Many different Yakuza families and clans, too many to keep track of. This can allow for many beloved characters to come and leave behind a great legacy. But on the other hand, some characters may just disappear and possibly even be forgotten for one reason or another. With Infinite Wealth being Kiryu's supposed final game, this seems like a perfect time to say goodbye to all of the characters that we've gotten to know and love. However, many of them don't actually appear, which is really strange. Let's take a look at a list of characters forgotten by RGG Studios that never got a proper send-off. One of the best examples of this is the florist, a character who made his initial appearance in the first Yakuza game, who was named Kage in the English dub. With him having surveillance of nearly every part of the city with both people and cameras, he provided quality intel to his customers. This includes Kiryu, where he was informed about how Sarah was killed, as well as how Yumi was looking for Haruka. After assisting Aizawa and Saijima in Yakuza 5, that there is his final appearance. After that, he never showed up in another Yakuza game. Unless you count RGG Online, but I'm primarily referring to the mainline games. He doesn't say one final goodbye to Kiryu or anyone else, he just kind of disappears and isn't mentioned at any point. You'd think they'd bring him back one final time, but I guess it just wasn't meant to be. <laughs> Hayashi is one of the best characters to come out of the series, at least to me, so it's upsetting to me that he never showed up in any other games after Yakuza 2. He did make an appearance in Dead Souls, but that game is in canon I guess. He was somewhat of a rival to Kiryu, trying to take him out in the first two games, but of course is handily defeated. Being a member of the Omi Alliance, it would have been cool to see him again in Gaiden, maybe as a sub-boss before the final boss, or even in Seven, but this time fighting Ichiban instead of Kiryu. I can only imagine how great of a boss fight that would have been if that were the case though. Joji Kazuma definitely had an opportunity to come back, but unfortunately it was never seized. He appeared in Yakuza 3 as a mysterious character that bared a striking resemblance to another character that died. Shintaro Kazuma, later learning that he was a CIA agent from the United States. Being that he was the twin brother of Kazuma, and the relationship between him and Kiryu, it only makes sense for him to come back as a returning character in Infinite Wealth. Especially since Sayama, another character who went to America, did make an appearance. But of course, he doesn't. It does make sense though since he works for the CIA, which operates outside of the US, so maybe he was on a mission at the time. Not only that, but he does take his missions really seriously, as we've seen. Minami was another great character to come out of the series. Being a part of the Majima family, his attitude and personality fit perfectly. He had one of the most unique fighting styles that is rarely used, at least in the story fights, so it makes coming back to fight him all the better. It would have been cool to see him again, either as an ally or a boss, but beyond Yakuza 4, he's only mentioned in Dead Souls and makes a small appearance in RGG Online and Ichiban's story. I know he didn't play a huge role in the events of the main story, just kind of getting in the way of the main protagonists, but still, I think he deserves at least one more appearance. Yayoi was the acting chairwoman in place of Terada after he was killed by members of the Omi Alliance. In Yakuza 1 and Kiwami, you meet her in a substory, The Yakuza's Wife where she attempts to eliminate Kiryu with a group of other Yakuza, in an attempt to avenge her husband. But after the others are defeated, 
she learns that Kiri was not the true killer of Dojima, but instead Nishiki. After Daigo comes back and becomes chairman, she retires from the Yakuza, but I still think it would have been nice to see her again, especially if she were giving advice to Daigo about leading the men in the Tojo clan. If that were the case, Daigo wouldn't be chasing around the guy that was chairman for like, what, five minutes before immediately retiring? But despite her importance in 2, she doesn't come back as a cameo or anything. Nishida was somewhat of a sidekick for Majima, always assisting him with his tasks like calling Kiryu so Majima could annoy him more, defusing a bomb, and most importantly, helping Majima flex his money in front of all the other patriarchs. He was honestly one of my favorite characters. His final appearance in Yakuza 5 is in the prologue with Saijima's section, where he is outside of the batting center, and after that, no more. The Majima family disbanded a bit before the events of 7, but you never hear anything about him after that. And given how somewhat of a significant character he was, it's one of the more stranger cases. The Ryota family members were characters significant in Kiryu's life. They were originally enemies but turned to allies after Nakahara swears an oath with Kiryu for saving Saki. They spent a lot of time with Kiryu and the kids at Morning Glory Orphanage and were really close friends. You can especially see how close they were given how Kiryu reacted to Rikia dying right in front of him. Given how much time Kiryu spent at the orphanage, it's strange that you never get to see the remaining members of the Ryota family after Yakuza 3. You would think they would visit from time to time, especially after Kiryu was forced to leave behind the orphanage. Maybe you would see them checking on Haruka and the kids in a cutscene or something. However, that doesn't happen. Infinite Wealth would have been a great way to see what the family was up to these days, but unfortunately, they're just another forgotten memory. Arase was that one dude in Yakuza with the annoying gun move set and also the one that Kiryu forgave, despite being involved in the killing of both Shinji and Reina. You first met him in Yakuza 1 where you have a fight with him when attempting to rescue both Shinji and Reina. He's obviously defeated, but makes a return in Yakuza 3 under a group called the Reapers. After this battle, he tells Kiryu that he will settle the score with him later. But later never comes. The closest thing we have to this is in Yakuza Dead Souls. But not only is that game not considered canon, he doesn't even have a fight with him. You'd think for a character that holds quite a grudge would find his way into a game in the future, but he's just another forgotten character in the realm of Yakuza. The Nishikiyama family has had quite a few deadly members. There's obviously the man himself, Arase whom we just mentioned, as well as Shindo and uh, Kanda. Okay, maybe the family kind of dropped in quality as time went on, but there's a certain member I want to talk about, and you likely forgot who he is, as have I. Hasabe was a member under Kanda, and at one point in Yakuza 3, tried to buy out Stardust, that way they can use it as a base of sorts. After the fight with him, and being informed about what's going to happen to Kashiwagi, he makes no further appearances in the game, even after Kanda's death, so it's quite a mystery of what happens to him. Watase's absence is an interesting one. The last time we saw him, he was planning on starting a security company with Daigo. However, things go wrong with Tatara, that one VTuber, which leads to the other protagonist have to go into hiding. For whatever reason, Watase doesn't appear amongst the others when you visit them. It just feels kind of weird how such an important character is just gone all of a sudden. These two weren't directly tied in with the main story, but instead were side characters that you can meet and talk to. They provided some assistance such as completion rewards to get items, or having revelations to unlock new heat actions or abilities. 
Bob first showed up in Yakuza 2 and Mac in Yakuza 3. They were reoccurring characters that were in quite a few games, Bob being in 9 of the games and Mac being in 3, where they both made one last mainline appearance in Yakuza 5. My assumption for this is that since they turned majority of completion rewards into abilities, such as being able to run for longer periods of time, later getting rid of this altogether, and revelations being removed from 5, there really wasn't much of a reason to bring them back. It is a shame, but maybe one day we'll get to see their beautiful faces again. Ah, uh, Aizawa. The man who doesn't know why he's here, and we don't know where he ends up after his fight with Kiryu. Kurosawa intended on him inheriting both the Tojo and Omi Alliance, but that wasn't what he seeked in life. He only wishes to defeat Kiryu in a fight. Of course, he loses, as expected, and despite him being told by Kiryu that he plans to fight him again after he reaches the top and gets stronger, that never happens. Closest thing to this is the arena in Gaiden, but it's nothing more than a robot with his moveset. It would have been cool to have a battle with him as Kiryu, similar to the fight with Amon or Laokan Long in Infinite Wealth. That would have been a perfect way to tie up that loose end, but this may never be the case, just like all the other characters in this video. Unfortunately for Aizawa, his dream of defeating Kiryu just may never be fulfilled. Now, there are realistic reasons as to why these characters may have never made another return. Maybe a voice actor wasn't available, or even too expensive at the time. Or there wasn't a way they were able to properly insert the character for the story they wanted to write without it feeling forced. And it's understandable. But there's this part of me that really wishes these characters were given proper send-offs, no matter how minor they felt in the story. Because it just feels like their arc is incomplete. For someone like Yayoi, we can say that she obviously retired after Daigo was officially declared chairman of the Tojo clan, but again, it feels incomplete. Especially now that Infinite Wealth is intended to be Kiryu's last game, where he takes the leading role as one of the main characters. But who knows, maybe Ichimon will get to meet these guys one day. Then they'll get the chance to say their final farewell assuming they don't stay long. But that about wraps it up for this video. Once again, I want to thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more content like this if you're interested, and I'll see you guys later.